As you begin to make your composition book cover with a zippered pouch, the first thing you have to do is make sure you have all of your supplies. You need one nine inch zipper, a third of a yard of interfacing, a four by eight piece of vinyl, and you also need one third yard of two coordinating fabric. So one third of a yard for the main fabric and one third of a yard for contrasting. There are a lot of pieces to cut out in this project, so I'm not gonna go over every single one, but on my website, I do have a cut layout guide which can help show you um, the size of the pieces and how to cut them out to maximize the use of your fabric. So let's go ahead and get started with the sewing. The first thing we're going to do is to construct our zipper. When you make the zipper pouch, you don't want the actual zipper teeth to end up in your seam allowance because it would be super bulky and it wouldn't turn very well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some fabric on the ends. So you need um, one nine inch zipper and two rectangles of fabric from each of your colors um, that are one inch wide by about two to three inches long. So let's start with the end without the zipper pull. Lay your zipper right side up. Take one rectangle of fabric, one that you want to be on the outside of your project, and lay it right side down on top of the zipper. You want the edge of the fabric to just touch this metal stopper. Now, if you like, you can go ahead and base this in place right now with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Take care to make sure you don't hit that metal stopper. Um, what else you can do, if you prefer, you can sew your lining piece at the same time. So hold this rectangle in place, flip it over, take the rectangle you want to be on the inside Place it right side down on top of the wrong side of the zipper, lining it up just with the other rectangle. So again, the top edge of your rectangle here should be just before that metal stop. And so now you kind of have a sandwich with your two layers of fabric and the zipper in between. You can use a, a clip to hold these in place. and then we're gonna sew right along this edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've stitched across the end of the fabric here, now you want to cut off the edge of your zipper tape. You don't want to use your nice sewing scissors for this because it could damage them. But go ahead and just cut off the edge of the teeth right at the edge of the fabric. And so now it's nice and straight. Then you're gonna take your two rectangles and you're gonna pull them away from your zipper teeth and we're gonna stitch again. This time we're gonna stitch right along here. We're gonna do a top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The end of our zipper is all nice and finished with our fabric. If you don't want to do both of the rectangles at the same time, you can sew the, the top one in place, then sew the bottom in place, and just do it in two steps instead of one. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. On this one, it's a little bit trickier because you have the zipper tab. So when you do the other end, you have to kind of hold these two edges together. So one thing that I like to do is I like to use a clip to hold them in place. And then once those are held in place, we're going to finish it just as before. So we're going to take the fabric rectangle that's going to go on the outside of our pouch. 
We're gonna turn it right side down and align it just past those metal stoppers. We're gonna flip it over. We're gonna place the other rectangle right side down on top of that. Again, just past those metal stoppers. Take the time to make sure everything's all lined up. Secure it with a clip. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. On this end, I like to stitch over it a couple times just to make sure it's securely closed, especially over those zipper teeth. Once you've sewn, go ahead and trim the end with your all-purpose scissors. Flip the two rectangles away from your zipper and stitch right here with a top stitch of an eighth of an inch. Our zipper is now ready to use. Let's move on to our next step. For the next step of this project, we're going to work on the window portion of the zipper pouch. To start, you need your vinyl, and you need four rectangles of fabric, two from each print. These rectangles are approximately two by four inches in size. So let's start by finishing one end. So I'm gonna take one of each of my rectangles, and this is going to be kind of similar to what we did with the zipper. You're going to take the rectangle of fabric that you'd like on the outside of your pouch and you're going to lay it right side down along one short edge of your vinyl. You're going to flip it over and you're going to lay the other contrasting rectangle right side down on top of it. Again, both of these rectangles will be aligning with the right hand side of your vinyl. You do want to take the time to line these up as best you can. Now, since this is vinyl, you do not want to use pins. If you use pins to secure this, it will poke holes in the vinyl, which could be visible on your final project. For the same reason, you do want to be careful when stitching because the more you have to unpick, the more holes you make in your vinyl. So do take care when you sew. So I'm gonna use two clips to hold this in place. I find that it's nice to put one clip on the side and one clip on the top edge next to where I'm gonna sew. We're gonna be sewing down this edge here, the far right hand side. And so if I put a clip here, I can keep that in place when I begin to sew. So we're gonna go ahead, sew along this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. On this project, take care to make sure that your seam allowances are exact. If you're not careful with your seam allowance size, it's possible that your cover won't fit. So do take care and make sure you follow those as accurately as possible. Most of the time when you purchase vinyl, it comes with a tissue paper backing. If at any point you're sewing and it seems like your vinyl is sticking to the base of your sewing machine, go ahead and slide your tissue paper under your vinyl and it will help it slide more smoothly through the machine. Sometimes when I'm sewing vinyl as well, I like to increase my stitch length just a bit. I'm gonna be using a stitch length of 3.0. Once you stitch along this top edge, you're gonna take your two rectangles that you've sewn and flip them away from the vinyl. Now normally, we would press these in place if we were quilting, but since this is vinyl, we can't press it. The iron would melt it. So you just want to gently pull the fabric away from the vinyl and then finger press, which means just rub your fingers over the edge 
make it as flat as you can. You can do so on both sides. And now we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch. We are going to sew this fabric in place along this edge on the fabric side and we're going to use a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. The right hand side of our zipper pouch is finished. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other edge and we'll come back after that's done. We've now attached both sides to our vinyl window in our zipper pouch. Now let's go ahead and do the edge on the top. To the top edge you need two rectangles. These two rectangles are one and three quarters inches by 11 inches. You need one of each color and we're going to attach them in a similar process to what we did for the two sides. If you're making the snug fit pouch, these will be one and a half inches wide instead of one and three-fourths. Take your rectangle that's going to be on the outside of the pouch, turn it right side down, and place it on top of the top edge. Once this rectangle is in place, go ahead and flip it over. Place your contrasting rectangle right side down on top of it. Center as best you can. Make sure those edges are aligned and clip in place. And now we're going to sew this far edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Our top edge is now sewn. So as before, take your two rectangles, press them up and away from the vinyl with your fingers. Don't use your iron. Do the same with the rectangle on the back. And now we're going to sew this in place with a top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Next you're going to repeat this process along the bottom edge. The rectangles for the bottom edge are 2 by 11 inches. So let's go ahead and attach the bottom. The window section of our zipper pouch is all connected. So now that we have that in place, we're ready to attach the zipper. Remember, the top edge is more narrow than your bottom edge. We're going to attach the zipper to the top edge. Now, when you look at your composition book, what's on the right hand side will be the top. So we want our zipper tab to end up on the top. So I'm going to close my zipper. And I'm going to put it right side down on top of my pouch. I want to center this. And I'm going to line up the top edge of the zipper with the top edge of the fabric. And these little pieces may extend, that's okay, we'll trim those off a little later. Do make sure that they stay lined up. So uh, this is just fabric, so you can pin it in place or clip it in place, whatever your preference is. And I'm going to sew along this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. When sewing on a zipper, you want to make sure you have an accurate seam allowance. To do this, you want to make sure that your zipper foot is attached to your machine, and you want to make sure that your needle passes through the little slot in the foot. This will help it be more stable when you're sewing. To make sure that your needle is passing through the correct spot, there may be a couple things that you need to do. One method, if you're using a Brother computerized sewing machine, is to change to stitch number one. If your machine doesn't offer that, another way to move your needle position is often to change the width of the stitch. So when you're using a straight stitch, but you change the width, it will change the position of the needle. 
If you make sure that your needle is passing right through that little window, it helps you get a much more accurate seam allowance. At some point when you're sewing the zipper, you're going to notice that the tab is in the way. When that happens, go ahead and stop, put your needle down and lift your presser foot up, grab the tab and slide it back past the foot, put the foot back down and continue sewing. Now that my zipper's been sewn, I'm gonna to check to make sure I caught all layers on both sides. And once I make sure that it's attached, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the extra portion of the zipper. So I would want it to line up with the edges of my fabric. I'm also gonna take the time to trim any threads Okay, I'm now going to fold the zipper up and as before, I'm going to finger press and I want to take care to make sure that the fabric is away from the zipper teeth and I'm gonna check to make sure that my zipper opens and closes appropriately. If your zipper doesn't, go back and adjust to make sure that your zipper is functional. Once I'm done finger pressing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna top stitch this zipper in place using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. This will help make sure that the zipper lays flat in my project. When you're doing your top stitching, you may need to use your zipper foot still, or you may be okay to use your regular presser foot. It really just depends on your machine. On my machine here, it's best to keep using the zipper foot. As I sew, I'm gently pulling my fabric away from the zipper to make sure that it stays clear. Once your window panel has been constructed and your zipper has been attached, you want to check the size. This should be 11 by 7 inches, so 11 by 7, or if you're doing the snug fit version, 11 by six and three quarters. So check your size. If it's not those dimensions, go ahead and trim it. When you trim, you do not want to trim the zipper tape. Only trim the two sides and the bottom if necessary. Next, we need to fuse interfacing to the pieces that will be on the outside of our cover. We're gonna fuse interfacing to the spine piece, which is 11 by four, the back cover, which is seven by 11, and the front cover, which will be visible inside the window of the pouch, um, which is either seven by 11 or six and three quarters by 11, depending on the size you're making. So let's go ahead and start. To fuse interfacing, make sure that your fabric is right side down. Take your piece of interfacing and make sure the rough side, the glue side, is touching the fabric. You want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for how to apply it. This is just a featherweight interfacing, so I'm just going to apply some heat with my iron and press. Take the fabric that you'd like to be visible on the inside of your zipper pouch and lay it right side up. This fabric should be the same dimensions as your window portion. So 11 by seven or 11 by six and three quarters. I'm doing the snug fit, so mine is 11 by six and three quarters and I'm ready to add the window. So lay this portion on top of your rectangle. Take care to align your top and sides. And now we're going to stitch in place with a quarter inch seam allowance along both sides and the bottom edge. 
To sew this portion, I'm going to make sure I have my regular presser foot attached to my machine. We've basted it in place, and now it's time to attach the spine. So the spine piece is 4 by 11. We're going to lay it right side down on top of our fabric and pin. You want to take care to make sure that you are aligning all of your pieces. The zipper should be sandwiched in between. You can use pins or clips. I like to use pins but angle them so that they don't hit my zipper teeth. And now I'm going to sew across the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to make sure that my zipper foot is attached to my machine. Next I'm going to finger press the spine piece away from the zipper and top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So gently pull our fabric away from the zipper and sew with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you top stitch, you should be stitching through two layers of fabric and your zipper tape. The spine piece has been attached to our pocket and now you can check your zipper. You'll notice that we have a nice zipper pouch here and it's all secure and in place. If you notice that something's not quite right, take the time to go ahead and fix that. Now we have our spine and the pocket window, so let's go ahead and add our back cover. The back cover is 7 by 11 and it's one of those pieces that you applied interfacing to. Lay it right side down on top of the others, aligning with the left hand side with the spine. Go ahead and sew with a half an inch seam allowance. We're done with our zipper so I've switched back to my regular presser foot. I'm sewing with a half an inch seam allowance. You do want to take care to make sure it's accurate so that your cover fits in the end. Now that we've sewn this side, we're ready to top stitch and press. Be careful to make sure your iron doesn't touch the vinyl side, but we are going to take our seam allowance and press it towards the spine. So press it this way. And I'm going to secure that seam allowance in place with a top stitch of 1 8 of an inch. If you like, you can use a decorative stitch for this. We're now going to prepare the flaps that our composition book will slide into. These are the 5.5 by 11 inch rectangles. Take one of your rectangles and lay it right side down on your ironing board. We're going to press and fold one of the long edges. Take the top edge and fold it over a quarter of an inch and press. Fold again the same amount or just a smidge more. Repeat this process on the other rectangle on the opposite edge. We're now going to stitch these two folds in place. We're going to sew each fold with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance or just a bit less. We want to be sewing next to the interior fold here to make sure it lays flat. We're 
We have both our seams sewn. Now we're gonna go ahead and press them flat one more time. Lay your cover right side up and let's attach the flaps. Take one flap and lay it right side down on the right edge of your project. Align the top, side, and bottom. The side that you've finished, the edge you finished, should be pointing towards the spine. Do the same with the other on the opposite side. So lay it right side down on the left hand side. The finished edge should point towards the spine and so make sure that the top, side, and bottom are aligned. We're now going to baste these in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're going to sew top, sides, and bottom. The flaps are now attached. The last step is to prepare the inside lining of the cover. So you should have two rectangles, eight and three fourths by 11 inch rectangles. You're gonna take your two rectangles and place them right sides together. And we're gonna sew them along this left hand edge here with a half an inch seam allowance if you are doing the regular fit cover and with a 5 8 inch seam allowance if you're doing the snug fit. When we sew this edge we're going to do something just a little bit different. We want to leave the center section open but we want to be able to press it to make sure that it gives us a good guide and that's where we're going to flip our project later. So. Um, what we're going to do when we stitch this edge is for the first inch, so I'm going to mark about an inch down, we're going to sew with a regular stitch length. From this point to about an inch from this end, we're going to sew with a basting stitch, about stitch length 5 or 6. Then from this point on, we're going to turn back to the normal stitch length and continue on. So again, regular stitch length, basting stitch length, regular stitch length. And you'll keep the same seam allowance the whole way through. So when you're done sewing, it looks like a regular seam, but these stitches are small and these stitches are big. You're going to stitch for the first inch and then back stitch. Change your stitch length to approximately five or bigger. And now we're basting the se center section. Stop about an inch from the bottom, return your stitch back to the normal length, back stitch, and continue on. Now the reason we stitched that way is so that we could open it later, but so that we could still have a good guide for pressing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press this seam open. I'm going to lay my cover right side up and I'm going to lay my lining or my cover inside piece right side down on top of it. Now these two pieces should be the same size. They should be 11 inches tall and 16 and a half inches wide if you're doing the regular fit and 16 and a quarter if you're doing the snug fit. If it's not that size, go ahead and trim it so that it's correct. If it's not the right size, it may not fit, so take care. We're gonna go ahead and pin this in place. And we're gonna sew all the way around on all four sides with a half an inch seam allowance.
clip your corners. Now we're going to create the opening to turn our project. On our center seam of our lining, we are going to remove our basting stitches so that we have an opening. So I'm going to go to one side, unpick a couple stitches, and then usually that opens it up in the middle. And you can very easily see where to rip your stitches. So go ahead and do that for the whole opening. We now have a big window in our project. So take care, turn it right side out, try not to crinkle the vinyl if you can. Okay. Make sure your side seams are fully turned. Trim any threads. Let's press, but take care not to press your vinyl. Our last step is to close this opening. So we're going to do so using a slip stitch. So double thread a needle, um, and this is going to be a little bit of hand stitching. Our cover is done. Our opening has been closed. We have our two flaps and we're ready to go ahead and insert our notebook. This cover fits most standard size composition notebooks. This is a nine and three quarters by seven and a half inch notebook. Open up the front flap and slide it into the pocket. Flip to the back side, and most of the time you have to arch the spine to get it into the back pocket. You now have a finished composition notebook cover with a windowed zipper pouch.